So now I've taken a look at that special situation of direct proportion, I want to take a look at a different relationship between two variables, one that's not linear, one that's known as inverse proportion. To help explain that though, I want you to consider this problem. Let's say that we had a block of land and we need to mow this block of land as part of our upkeep. And we've got a ride on mower and we know that a ride on mower will take 120 minutes to be able to mow that block of land. But I wanna know what would happen if we were to have a second ride on mower help us mow this land, or a third one, or a fourth one? Well, let's investigate that for a bit. What we've got here is two variables. The first variable being how many ride on mowers that we're using, and the second one being how long it's gonna to take to mow this block of land. Now, the time it's gonna take for us to be able to mow this block of land is gonna be dependent on how many ride on mowers we use. So the time is our dependent variable and also known as our y variable. So let's create a table of values. Now, in this relationship, we know that one lawn mower will take us 120 minutes to be able to mow this block of land. Now, if we were to look at two lawn mowers, well, the theory says that should take half the time. So if we looked at half of this, it'd be 60 minutes to be able to mow this. If we look at three lawn mowers, well, that should be a third of our starting time. So if we divide 120 by three, it should take us approximately 40 minutes. At four, well, that'll be a quarter of the original time. Now a quarter of 120 will be 30 minutes. At five will be a fifth. So divide this by five and you'll get 24. And if we were finally to look at six right on all mowers, well, we'd divide this one by six. So that would be at 20 minutes. Now what you can see here is it's clearly not a linear relationship anymore. When we added an extra lawnmower to the task, it had a significant improvement of time. A third one still improved it, improved it by 20 minutes, but it's nothing compared to the 60 minutes that the first one did. The fourth one improved it by 10 minutes, and then it improved by six, and then by four. So each one that we added did improve the total time, but it didn't have the same effect as it did to begin with. But to help show that, I'm going to go ahead and graph these set of values. So now I've completed my graph here and created a trend line of what's going on. You can see that this has got this sort of curvature to the graph. And if we were to look in what's happening as this x value approaches the value of zero. So I know in our problem here that x can never be less than one because you've always got to have one person at least mowing it. But let's look at the theoretical side of it. Let's say we could have a half a person mowing or a quarter of a lawn mower. As we continue approaching zero, in that theoretical time space, if we would only have half a lawnmower sort of working, we would double the time again. If we had a quarter, we would multiply the time by four. So it would keep extending this time to be greater and greater and greater. But, and this is important here, we can never complete this task if we don't have something looking to complete it. So if this x value is equal to zero. So this creates this graph that's gonna keep going closer and closer to this y axis, but never actually touch it. So we call this here a vertical asymptote. Now, if we were to look at what would happen if we increased the number of mowers further and further and further, well, we would continue to decrease the total number of time, but, it will always take a certain amount of time to complete it. it. The task just doesn't get complete with no time. So this will keep getting closer and closer and closer to this x-axis, but it will never actually intercept the x-axis because there needs to be some kind of time to complete the task. So over here, we've actually got this horizontal asymptote that's happening. 
And when we've got a relationship that has this vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote, and this sort of curvature between them, we call this shape of a graph a hyperbola. So now we've had a look at what this sort of relationship looks like. Let's have a look at what makes this sort of relationship an inverse relationship. And to do that, I'm actually going to refer back to my table of values. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to create a new row here. And I'm going to look at what happens if I multiply my x and my y variable together each time. Now when I do this, I've got this 1 multiplied by 120, which is going to be 120. In the second one, I've got 2 times 60, which is 120. 3 times 40 is 120. 4 times 30 is 120. 5 times 24 is 120. 6 times 20 is 120. So when I multiply my two variables, my x and y variable together, it always equals 120 in this situation. So what we can say from that is in this situation, when we multiply x with y, it'll always equal 120. And if I wanted to represent this relationship as an equation expressed with y equals, I'd need to divide both sides by x, so my y would equal 120 divided by k. Now, in essence, this is how we tell whether two variables are inversely proportional. For two variables to be inversely proportional to one another, we should be able to multiply these two values together every single time and no matter what, it equals the same value. It might not always be 120, but it should equal the same value. So more generally speaking, when two variables are inversely proportional to one another, when we multiply x and y together, they should equal the same value. And we call this value k. Now, if we were to rearrange this in terms of y equals, we need to divide both sides by x, so our y is equal to our k value divided by our x. Now in summary, for two variables to be inversely proportional to one another, we should be able to multiply our two variables together each time and it should equal the same value. If we have that, it does mean that the two variables will be inversely proportional. If they are inversely proportional, they'll create this shape of a graph that is known as a hyperbola where it'll have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis and a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis.